in order to recover you also have to accept that you may never recover i know what i'm saying i know exactly what i'm saying in order to recover from ocd you also have to accept that you may never recover from ocd it's probably one of the core fears that goes for literally every ocd sufferer i think because the thing that everyone is afraid of is being stuck with this disorder for the rest of their life never getting better always having intrusive thoughts always having guilt and shame always feeling uncomfortable and just never being able to get out of that low depressive feeling that's essentially what everyone is afraid of right and what people are often aiming for when they're working on recovery is that i want to work on ocd recovery recover from this disorder and then just leave it behind in the dust and just live the rest of my life completely worry free uninterrupted by ocd that approach in itself will get you in a lot of trouble because you are really aiming for number one perfection and also it's being unrealistic about your genetic makeup right because of course there's a certain part of ocd that is your genes so even if you recover from ocd you can't leave your genetic makeup behind right which is not to say that you have to struggle with ocd all the time but yes in your mind just that acceptance that there is its genetic presence even though that gene might not be active anymore when you recover but the genetic presence is still there it makes people so uncomfortable to really even think about it because they think that oh my god there's always this threat in the background it it no longer has to be a threat i have been recovered so i am not living my life under this like threat like oh my god is this going to trigger me am i going to have a setback is a relapse about to come oh is this ocd is ocd trying to like own like i'm not living in hyper vigilance right i'm living as normally as a person can right it no longer is in the framework of is a ocd or not ocd but i do accept that it is a part of my genes in that way right part of the reason i still haven't had a relapse and i know how crazy this sounds as well part of the reason i haven't had a relapse is because i'm not afraid of a relapse if i had been afraid of a relapse i 100% i think would have relapsed by now because ocd will do or go for exactly the thing that you're afraid of so if you are terrified of having a relapse then you will have a relapse i'm not afraid of having a relapse i don't want it surely i don't like i don't want to be where i used to be chronically anxious and just afraid all the time but i'm also not terrified of it what's the worst that can happen if i have a relapse i'll retrace my steps i i'll do what i did before and i'll get better again literally literally that's all there is to do it's the same as you having a fever you taking the steps for it whatever you take antibiotics or um whatever measures you take to get better from a fever and you get better the next time you have a fever again you retrace your steps that you did before this helped you get better okay i'll redo that again it's kind of like the same thing and of course like ocd is in that way feels way more worse and intense than a fever yes but the principle is still the same so I don't live in that world of oh I've left OCD in the dust behind and like it's I am like you know because it, this is not me being cynical like in my mind I I try to be a bit more realistic and a bit more flexible with my thinking so if I have a setback or a relapse in the future fine I will I don't see anything where it can make me relapse though I mean I don't see I don't know if I really try to think about it is there something that it can are there any weak spots where it can latch again or try to corner me again I don't I I on I genuinely can't really think of anything right now because uh with contamination OCD I think I'm pretty good with that relationship OCD pretty good with that fear of exhaustion um yeah I I mean I don't see it having a strong latch over there health ocd i don't know i mean um because i used to have health ocd when i was younger um but i never really had to work on because because i was young it was easy to just like come out of it and you know 
So I don't know. I mean, existential thoughts, being the only one alive. I I don't know that those things don't scare me necessarily. So I don't know. I mean, so um, like I'm keeping options open. Like maybe they might again. Maybe it might happen because never say never. So again, mostly I don't think there's anything to latch on. But you know, if it happens with some prop, with some theme, with some fear, it happens, right? But that's also part of the reason why I I'm not like re like relapsing or like any of those things because I I accept that it might happen in that way, right? Um, so. and this is a re- this, this is really the hardest part i think one of the hardest parts that a lot of people have to deal with accepting that they might never recover accepting that their life may be affected by ocd forever um because it seems like such a cynical thing but you really have to think about it you're really basing your literally your entire life on one singular factor literally on one singular factor um and it's the same way that people with let's say body dysmorphia they will be defining their happiness by one singular factor which is how they look people with relationship ocd are going to define their entire life by one singular factor of the the success or failure of their relationship um people with cheating ocd if i cheat then life over their lack of loyalty uh and lack of fidelity in a relationship becomes the singular defining point of everything that kind of thinking is what will constantly get you in trouble over and over and over and over again so you really have to then i mean that's where accepting this difficult thing comes into play right which is that ocd might afflict your life forever and the reason that i mean it sounds very negative and sounds very depressing but like to be honest like accepting that you may never recover is actually a little liberating and i'll tell you why because once you accept that you open up the possibilities in your mind in the way you perceive life to not let this one single factor hold you back because the more you are resisting the resisting that acceptance of no i don't want to accept that i might have ocd forever or might suffer forever the more you resist that the more you are making it that pivotal central point of your life instead accepting that you may have it forever kind of releases that pressure to be like okay i may never recover but perhaps there are other parts of my life that can play a good positive influence over my mental health right it helps open up that possibility of looking at other things it helps define your things by more complex and multiple factors at play at the same time rather than this one thing becoming the central force right so it's again um a lot of people don't even want to say it that oh i might have ocd forever because they're like no like i can't even say it because if i if i accept that i might have ocd forever then i'll become complacent and not work on recovery no you're still working on recovery i can accept for example um i can accept that i'm skinny i am right i'm quite slim um i'm not gym fit i'm not like i'm none of those things right and i'm okay with that right i accept that i am this way um but does that mean i'm going to become complacent because of that acceptance i'm going to become complacent on working on my health or fitness no i mean i do have it as a goal in my life i do want to work on it right i do want to become um a bit more fit right i'm not in bad shape but i just think that i, I it would be nice to be in better shape and i will take that up as um as a goal maybe maybe the later this year i i don't i don't have a timeline on that so it's still a goal that i am trying to work towards or incorporate into my life but in the meantime i do accept that i look a way that 
I'm comfortable with, but it's not my ideal way that I want to look and I'm fine with that. Right. So acceptance does not mean that you'll become complacent or you're not going to work on that goal anymore. So accepting that you may never recover does not mean that you're not going to work on recovery anymore. Yes, you're going to still work on recovery because that's the more like hel- healthier choice, healthier choice in the sense that it's going to bring you a lot of benefits in your life. Right. So that's the choice that is going to obviously improve the quality of your life. So you're still going to work on it, um, but it just won't become like it just won't become this absolutist thing that it's this or nothing at all right it's now or never that mindset has to be shaken up so just thought i'd pop in here because this is probably something i i talk about on a weekly basis multiple times with people on one-to-one calls trying to highlight the importance of accepting that you may never recover Again, sounds completely nuts. I know, I know, I know what I'm saying and I know it sounds absurd, but it's such a key important point in anyone's recovery journey. If you're really able to accept that you may never recover, to be honest, after that, there's not much, there might not be much that's holding you back. Your recovery journey like the rest of it becomes a bit easier when when you're able to accept this. I think for me as well, this is way before like I, you know, even started working on my uh, OCD recovery. Like this is way before I even knew what to do about it because I was feeling completely hopeless with um, OCD, right? I didn't know what to do. I didn't know what was happening. I did not know what the steps were to recover. I did not know if recovery was even possible. I genuinely without and without even knowing that I was working on acceptance, I genuinely had just made peace with the fact that I guess this is going to be my life. I thought, well, you know, other people have, you know, other challenging life factors, right? Uh, They might have life stressors. They might have, you know, uh, a broken home. Someone might have financial problems uh, long term. Someone might not be in the best relationship of their life. Someone might have a child that passes away. Someone might have depression that they deal with um, on and off their entire life. Um, Maybe my, like the cards that I am dealt with is OCD and just having chronic anxiety. And I genuinely just like made peace with that. I was like, I guess this is it. It, it, it's just something that I have to go in and out of. Some some years it might be a bit better and then other years it might not be so better. And, I, and I'm, I'm kind of glad that I went through, and initially it felt quite hopeless and cynical, but I'm glad I went through that like learning curve even before working on OCD recovery at all. Um, because I think once I came into OCD recovery, and started working on it like more diligently. Like I was already in that low pressure kind of thing of like, I have to recover kind of thing. For me, it was a bonus. It wasn't a requirement. It became a bonus that if I recover, it's an added bonus in my life um, because it'll, it'll really improve the quality of my life. But I did not hinge my entire happiness on it. Um, was I perfect about that mindset? Absolutely not. Because obviously there were a lot of moments where I was like, oh, I just wish this is gone. Of course. And when you, when you're really in your debt, in the depths of it, you do feel that way. Yes. But for the most part, I think it just helped with working on things and it helped with also just being like being free to make mistakes and take risks on the recovery, on the recovery journey and do things for my recovery, even if it felt like it might be the wrong thing. Because at that point, I thought I I don't have anything to lose. I've already accepted that I might have this literally for the rest of my life. So might as well just, I don't know, um, like might as well just like take that leap and take that risk. Again, not saying that it was that easy because I've talked about in enough videos that I struggled with taking risks as well. Yes, of course, because it felt like absolutely terrifying. I'm just highlighting that some things that did make it easy was being able to accept that this might be it forever. So really important point to highlight for a lot of OCD sufferers. It speaks, it goes to the heart of 
fear or fear. It goes to the heart of literally any theme that you have, health OCD, POCD, existential OCD, um, relationship OCD, cheating OCD, retroactive jealousy, um, sensory motor OCD, you name it. Any theme that you have, this literally goes to the heart of it. So, chop chop. <laughs> Bye.